Hello, it's Mike, and I'm back with another room temperature mod video for my Valent Ecotech Plus combination boiler with weather compensation. In the previous video, I was busy testing room temperature mod equals expanded, and I asked the question, which room temperature mod is the most cost effective and saves you the most money? And at the time, I think I compared room temperature mod equals expanded to room temperature mod equals inactive. But I'd only tested inactive for one day or two days, and it was quite expensive, which is why I switched to expanded. What is expanded, inactive, and active? What does that really mean? Well, expanded, which is what I was running during these this period, I mean, I was running it from the 20th of January to the 31st of January. But what it means is the room temperature mod makes use of the weekly or daily timer, which is this um, green line on this chart. Let me just zoom it in so you can see. When the green line is peaking, the flow temperature peaks at a value, and in this example, it's above 40, so 40 to 42. And that flow temperature is determined by the heat curve. And the heat curve is basically using the outdoor temperature to determine what the flow temperature must be. And that's what you see here. So depending on what heat curve I was on at the time, which I think it was 1.2 or 1.3, when it was during the timer, you can see that the flow temperature would rise up to whatever the flow temperature needed to be. And it would stay in that sort of area until the timer switched off. When it drops, when, when you see the green line dropping into the trough, then the flow temperature would drop off because basically what was happening at that point in time, the boiler was turning off. And this was another thing that I was comparing in my previous video. I was saying when the room temperature mod was set to inactive, the boiler was on constantly, 24-7. It was on. It was running. And when it was set to expanded, you can see the boiler turns on and off, on and off. That's how it works, on and off. And what I noticed as well, that when it was set to this expanded, the indoor temperature never really reached the desired temperature. It was always below. And then it would run out of time, and then it would start dropping off. And then the timer would come back on, and it would start peaking. But it, it, it went like this for the 10 days, and I never really achieved the desired temperature. It wasn't really a problem because we just found that the, the, the gap between when it was heating and when it was off, it only dropped maybe a degree, if that, a couple of points of a degree. And then it would, it would rise back up when it, was, when it was on. So it wasn't really a problem. But anyway, my findings at the time were that room temperature mod equals expanded was cheaper to run than the inactive because inactive, the boiler was on constantly and it didn't matter if it was hot or cold because it was on constantly, it was just using more gas and it was just costing more money. But we're not talking a lot more money. It was six pounds 10 a day or six pound 20. There were two days in January that it was extremely cold where the tr temperature dropped below zero. And for those two days, it cost seven pound 15 or something silly like that. So we're talking marginal amounts, but when the boiler was running on expanded like this, where it was turning on and off, on and off, for the 10 days that I ran it, we were getting around about £3.50 a day, £4.20 at the very highest. So it was a lot cheaper to run. But anyway, on the 31st of January, which is around about this period, I switched the boiler to um, inactive. Now, inactive, it totally ignores everything that is in the boiler setup. So the weekly timer, it ignores it completely. Uh, it only relies on the outdoor temperature to determine the flow temperature. Now, again, I kept the heat curve exactly the same during this period. And I said at the time, I'm going to monitor it for a day or two and see if it becomes more expensive. And, and it turned out it did 
or it did certainly increase a lot more than I was expecting. I think the the very next day after I made this change to inactive, the gas price was it went up a pound. So that scared me a little bit because I thought, well, maybe the heat curve of 1.3 is too high. So I dropped it to 1.2. And I said also at the time, if you make changes to the boiler, make sure that you only change one or two things because multiple changes, you just won't know the results and what's changed and what's affected, the cause and effect really. So just keep it, keep it very simple. Make sure you only change one thing and then give it a couple of days to see what's changed. But anyway, you can see a completely different outlook when you look at this chart. Now the blue line is the flow temperature. And as you can see on the expanded, it's, it's going up and down, up and down. And that's because the boiler was turning on and off, on and off. But from the 31st onwards, because the, it's only using the outdoor temperature and it's, that determines the, the flow temperature, you can see here yeah, the boiler stayed on. I haven't got the, the circuit, but I can tell you now, here yeah, is where it was turning on and off. From this period onwards, it's on the whole time. And it's only determining that flow temperature by the outside temperature, nothing else. So the thing was, I had called Valent to ask them a few questions about room temperature mod. And the chap that I spoke to, he was quite impressed that I was asking about room temperature mod and the flow temperature and the heat curve. He, he actually said to me, the questions that I was asking him are not the type of questions that they would be getting from the general public. It was more from an engineer. And I said, well, it's just because I've been studying this boiler inside out and all this data that I'm collecting from it, that's how I've come to know what all of these things mean. But anyway, the valent support person said, when you've got room temperature mod set to inactive, you should go into the Valent app and delete the timers. He says you don't need to delete them because it's going to ignore the timers completely. But for me and my peace of mind, I removed the timers completely. There weren't any. He also said that you should turn the operations on the mobile app, the My Valent Connect, to manual. So that's what I did. Then those were the changes that I'd made. I'd, I'd changed the room temperature mod to inactive. I switched off or deleted the timers and I turned the operation mode to manual. And then I spent the next 10 days watching it, as you can see here. And what I noticed is when it's set to inactive and it's using the outdoor temperature to determine the flow temperature, the flow temperature hovered between 41, 42, and it didn't drop further than 30, what, 33, 34, round about there, depending on the temperature outside. But it basically maintained a constant flow temperature throughout those days. You can see with room temperature mod set to inactive, and let me just turn off the flow temperature for now. What happened was, the indoor temperature exceeded the desired temperature. Remember I said room temperature mod set to inactive ignores all timers. And that's what you can see here. There's no up and down, up and down because the timers, I deleted them. What I also noticed was that the indoor temperature exceeded the desired temperature. So at this time, the desired temperature was set to 18 and the indoor temperature exceeded it every day. So I was thinking, why is it doing that? I want it to be 18. I don't want it to be 18.9, which it was at, in all of these days. So what I did was I reduced the, the heat curve. I set it to 0.9, which was a bit drastic. It was on 1.2 and I dropped it to 0.9, thinking, well, it's way too hot. I'm gonna, I want to bring down the indoor temperature. And that's exactly what happened. But of course, when you make changes, as I've mentioned in the past, they're not instant. So what tends to happen is you make a change today and maybe a day or two later, the changes actually start taking effect. And that's what happened. You can see the indoor temperature actually dropped 
below the desired temperature. So then I'd realized I dropped the heat curve too low. But before I changed the heat curve back up, I pushed up the desired temperature. You can see over here it was at 18, and then I increased it to 18.5, and then I increased it to 19, trying to get the, the indoor temperature back up. But at the same time, during this period, I increased the, the heat curve back to 1.1, just to get it back into the sort of the area that I wanted and then that's that worked you can see the indoor temperature then breached the desired temperature and it was all hot again which was great unfortunately this was the 10-day trial up for inactive and I am a little bit disappointed with myself because I made way too many changes in that period to really understand if I'd saved any money but that's the part that I want to discuss right now because I can actually show you because I've got data from Octopus which I pull into my home assistant and I'm able to show you what all of these days cost as well as what these days cost. This was room temperature mod equal to expanded and I showed a similar comparison in my previous video. And I'll put a link in the description. It's very useful information. Yeah, on this first section, and I'll just go back. You can see, let me just put the flow temperature back on. You can see the telltale signs, the up, down, up, down. That's room temperature mod set to expanded. That's this area, yeah. And in green, you can see the prices for each of those days. Now, the temperature started off fairly warm at 10, and you can see it's dropped Quite a bit during that period. This was the 31st when I switched over to room temperature mod set to inactive and you can see the flow temperature maintains a sort of a constant flow between 42, 43 and 35 around about there. But for those days you can see the price was considerably higher. This one in yellow this was when I switched it over because the switch over took place during the morning so that it had run for most of the morning and then I did the switch over and it only really reflected the following day but all the other days thereafter you can see it's a lot more expensive than these green days. This cheaper period is when I adjusted the heat curve down to 0.9. Now obviously with a lower heat curve you're going to have a lot less flow current flow temperature and, and that's what you can see you can you can see it's what happened was the flow temperature went from a range of 43 to 35 from 40 to 30 in fact some a lot of the days it was below 30 which kind of goes against what a few people in the comments of my previous videos have said that this boiler will only run between 30 and and whatever the limit is well, actually, it, you can see in these three days that it actually dropped below 30. It was running at 27, 26, round right about there for these particular three days. And then, obviously, the temperature, the indoor temperature had dropped below the desired temperature. So I started to mess around with the heat curves again, and I started to increase them. And I also increased the desired temperature to get the indoor temperature back above. But the minute I did that, you can see the flow temperature increased back up to 40 and it reduced. So it was back to 34, 35, round right about there. And the minute it got back into this range, the price per day went up. The conclusion is room temperature mod equals inactive is a lot more expensive than room temperature mod equals expanded. You can see it in the prices. It's clear as day. And then on the... 13th of February, I switched room temperature mod to active, and that's currently what it's on at the moment. And the way active works, it's quite similar to expanded. The only difference is the boiler is staying on. It's not switching off, and there's a definite up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's using the timers. What I had to do was create new timers. And then I switched the operation mode back to timer. And what you can see is it's it's warming up during the 
the the green peak and there's a lot of flow um, you can see that the range is is vastly different to what it was when it was inactive but then it does drop off when it's out of the timer so you can see when it drops down the the indoor temperature the yellow line does actually dip and then when it troughs or peaks it goes up again and then it drops it's, it's only dropping half a degree if that so again the temperature is being maintained it's i actually prefer this one but unfortunately there's a lot going on here. You can see there's a lot of cycling taking place, which is not ideal. You don't want your boiler to be cycling as, as often as this. It's a lot better. I mean, it was a lot better during um, inactive and even when it was on expanded. But yeah, it is up and down all the time, on and off, starting up, firing up, firing up. And it's also expensive. And you can see that in this gas cost. Now, it's not a like for like, so you can't look at it at, at the moment where it says here £6.18 is the 17th, because this, this price is actually for yesterday. So all of these prices are for the previous day. You can see during this inactive, the gas price was hovering around the £6 mark per day. And then when I switched it over to um, active, it dropped slightly but it was nowhere near as low as it was when it was running in expanded. Fantastic chart to show you what is more expensive than the other. And active and inactive is more expensive than expanded. There's just no doubt about it. Now, I guess it would come down to how you like your house to be warm. And do you want a constant temperature? Because that's really the difference between all three of these room temperature mod. With room temperature mod equals expanded, there's a definite on and off during the course of a day. If you can get by with just two timer modes, one in the morning and one in the evening, and the bit in the middle, if you happen to be away from your home, then it's perfect. You're not going to know it's going to drop in temperature slightly because you won't be there. But when you get back home, it'll be nice and warm or it'll be building up to be warm. And that's the other thing. It takes a bit of time, as you can see in those charts, it takes a bit of time for the indoor temperature to reach the, the top of the desired temperature. And most times it doesn't. But that's also dependent on your heat curve. If you set a very high heat curve, 1.5, around about there, no doubt about it, it'll reach it. But obviously the higher the heat curve, the higher the flow temperature, the more gas you are using to heat the water, it's going to cost a little bit more money. Now, with inactive, the indoor temperature met the desired temperature constantly because the boiler was constantly on. But the flow temperatures were very, very small window that it was operating in. And obviously, yeah, is um, active. Well, it's all over the place because it is making use of the timer, but it's it's dropping right below 30 degrees down to about what's that 20 29 and then it, it'll peak to whatever the heat curve says that the flow temperature should be that's where i'm going to leave it and then i think what i'll do is i'm going to switch back to expanded because this test is complete it's it's clear to me expanded is definitely the way to go all depending on how you prefer your heat in your home for us, that really worked well, and it also worked well on my um, bank balance for the day. If you've enjoyed what you see in this video, please give me a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It absolutely helps this algorithm get my videos out to more people. If you have any questions or comments or anything you want to ask me, please leave that in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Thank you again for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.